is equal to some particular value. And these are a little tricky because they might, they might trick you. So it says, find the points on the curve at which the tangent to the curve has a slope of half. So again, we're looking for points, right? And we want to know where the tangent has a slope of half. So that means that's where the derivative is equal to half. So guess why step A says to set the derivative equal to the slope, right? So what is the derivative equation that we have? Negative x over, and we're going to equal that to half. And now check out what happens, okay? Here we're not going to just get x equals something or y equals something. We're going to get an expression. We're going to get something with x's and y's. So part B says solve for x or for y, whichever is easier for you to work with. So in order to figure out where these two things are equal, we have to what? Cross multiply. So that would give me negative 2x equals 4y. So would it be easier to make it x equals or y equals is what step B is saying. x equals? It's actually about the same for both, except that one will give me a what? Negative. <coughs> one will give me a fraction and one won't, right? So this was actually the better idea. 4 divided by 2 is just what? Negative 2. So I know that x is negative 2y. Okay, so how can I find the y values? How can I find the actual number? Plug it into for every x, right? We're going to substitute this in the original equation. Just like we did before, except before we had a number, right? And we would put that number into the original equation. Now we don't. Now we have to do one step more before we get that number. Ready? All right, so we're going to have x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. That was the equation, in case you don't remember it. And we're going to replace the what? The x. So this will be negative 2y squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So now be careful here. What's negative 2y times negative 2y? Positive 4y squared plus 4y squared equals 16. So what's one cookie plus one cookie? Two cookies, right? This is four cookies plus four cookies, so we get eight cookies. Divide by eight, right? Y squared equals two, and take the square root. Y equals plus or minus the square root. Those are only my what? My y's. And I need my x and my y, right? I was trying to point up here, but it wasn't there. Okay, so how can I get the x's if I know the y's? Plug it in again into the original equation, right? So I'm going to put this in. So I'm going to have x squared plus 4 times the square root of 2 squared equals 16. Do I actually have to do both of them, or would both of them give me the same answers? What would happen if I put negative square root of 2 in there? And I square it, would I still get the same value that I would get if I put the positive one? Yeah, so I don't have to do both of them because it works out in my problem. Okay, sometimes you would have to check each single one if they were to give you two different answers. Okay, so be careful. Don't assume that you just pick one. All right, so let's see. If I have the square root of 2 squared, what happens to the square root and the square? So now I just have 4 times 2, which is 8. And I minus that 8. x squared equals 8. And what is the square root of 8? Plus or minus 2 radical 2, right? Good? Okay. Could I have gotten this answer also by plugging in this y over here? Well, would you have been super off? No. no what I if I put I... the radical 2 there? Would no, I have gotten no. the 2 radical 2? Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh my I... god. So. 
kind of did more work than we needed to. That's okay. That's okay. No. <laughs> we have two equations that are relating how x and y are related, right? We have the original one and we also have the derivative one. So either one will work for us. Cool? So now, how many possible points am I going to have? Two. Two. No. Not two. Four. Four. There's four possible combinations that could exist. You saw my two, but seven two. I know. It was like two times two, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so the next part is, is to pick the right points by checking that they satisfy part A. So sometimes we automatically assume that these points should work out. They should be the ones that give us the correct answer. That's not always the case. Okay, so this last part is very important. You have to check your points. So let's write down the points. Okay, what are they? Or what could they be? Let's start off with the positive x. So 2 radical 2, and put it with the positive radical 2. And then we got 2 radical 2 and put it with the negative radical 2. So that's two options. What would be the other one? Negative 2 radical 2 and positive radical 2. Negative 2 radical 2 and negative radical 2. So these are my possibilities. I don't know if they're all going to give me a slope of 1 half. Right? We can't assume that, we have to make sure. Okay? So be careful. If you end up with more than a couple of points, you need to check. We're going to check in here. So we're going to say dy dx has to equal half. So we're going to check that negative x over 4y gives us that half. <coughs> really all you have to focus on is the sign. Okay? Let's check it out. If I put positive 2 radical 2 there, that's going to make it what? Negative. And then I put positive radical 2 down here, that's a positive. So we got a negative over a positive, which is negative. So it doesn't equal that positive half. So this guy's out. Try the next one. Negative 2 radical 2 over 4 times negative radical 2. So that gives me a negative over a negative, which should give me a? Positive. So this guy's good. Okay, how about this one? Negative times negative, that gives me the positive, right? Mm -hmm. Over positive times positive, that gives me a positive. So positive over a positive gives me the one half. That one's also good. How about this last one? Negative negative makes it positive. Positive negative makes it negative, so that will give me a negative. So this guy's also good. So my answer should be what? So points where dy dx equals half are 2 radical 2 comma negative radical 2 and negative 2 radical 2 comma radical 2. Does that make sense? Yes? Let's check on the graph, okay? If you look at the graph, what kind of slopes would I have in quadrant 1? They'd all be negative, right? So I know that it can't be a point that's there. And the points that are there have x's that are what? Positive and y's that are positive. How about the slopes in quadrant 2? Positive. So positive half should have been something that was here. Right? And that's where my x's are negative and my y's are positive. So do we, is that one of them? Negative ra 2 radical 2 and positive 2 radical 2. Quadrant 3, nope, we'd have all negative slopes. Quadrant 4, we would have positive slopes. So that would be a positive x and a negative y, which is exactly what we have. Cool? Alright, and the last thing that they could probably ask you to do is what I'm asking you here on number 5. Write the equations of the lines tangent to the curve at the points that you found in number 4. Okay, so how do, what do I need to write equations of tangent lines? Alright, so what would be my point of tangency for one of them? 
2 radical 2, negative radical 2. And what would be the slope of the tangent line at that point? 1 half. They gave us that, right? Mm -hmm. So that equation would be y plus radical 2 equals 1 half times x minus 2 radical 2. Kindergarten stuff? The other point is negative 2 radical 2 comma positive radical 2. And the slope there is also half, right? That one's going to be y minus radical 2 equals 1 half times x plus 2. And then if I take it to the next step and say find the equations of the normal lines at these points. <laughs> Negative 2, right? Yeah. Easy? Mm -hmm. we'll see all the different ways they could ask the question? Yeah. That's just what we're practicing. We don't know what they're going to do. Alright. So those were too easy, right? We need some more challenging ones? No. Those were kindergarten stuff? So four more examples? That's too much. Two more only? And then, no what you got from there? No more. No? That's what I'm saying. And then we can do homework. Yeah. There's actually four. That's a tough one, right? Where is it? We're almost done, I promise. Where is it? <laughs> okay, so let's look at 6. This one is actually a calculator problem. We need the calculator in order to finish this guy. Okay? So it says, for what values of x will the curve, blah, have a horizontal tangent line? Show your work and explain your thinking. So notice that this one is not asking for, what, for at what points, right? This one is only asking for at what values of x. So that's kind of cool. We don't have to find the whole point. We just need the x values, right? Okay. So when do I have a horizontal tangent line? When the derivative is equal to zero. Do we have the derivative? Oh, so we can get it, right? Because we're awesome. So let's get the derivative. That'll be easy. Let's do it. What is it? 3x squared plus 3y squared dy dx equals product rule. It's an easy one, it's an easy one, calm down. Derivative of the first, 4 times the second, plus the first, 4x times the derivative of the second. Calm down. It was so challenging, now. I need a break. Plus 1, right? Yes. Yes? No. no? No. Why? No. That derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, good. Alright, so can we do it all in one shot like Daniela, or should I go like step by step? No, one shot. One shot? One shot? No. Are you sure? Like I can factor out the dy dx and move everything already? No. Yes. Yes? yes? Wait, you want to do that again? So I'm going to take out a dy dx, and what would have been left over? 3y squared, right? Minus 4x. Four 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 X. X. Are we okay? Yes. No? Your last please? No. What would I have on the other side? 4y minus 3x squared. And then divide by this guy, right? That was cool. That's where I want you to eventually get to. Be able to like skip those steps in the middle. Just make sure that you put the parts with the right signs. You don't mess that up. Okay? Good? Alright, so we did that. Now I need to figure out where that is equal to zero. So when would that equal to zero? When the numerator is equal to zero. Okay, so ultimately I just got to get this top part and equal it to zero. But it has x's and y's. So what do I want to what would I want to solve for? Do I want to make it y equals or x equals? 
Why do I want to make it y equals u? Very good, because I'll be able to replace the y's in the original equation, so that way my original equation will only have x's, and I can solve for those x's, because that's ultimately what I'm what? Looking for. Do you understand? Okay, so if I solve for the y's, I would say plus 3x squared, right? So I'm going to have 4y is equal to 3x squared. Divide by 4. So now I have y is equal to 3 over 4 x squared. Are we good? Yeah. That doesn't tell me anything though, right? It doesn't give me the values of x. It just gives me something that I could use. So just like before when we got y equals 3 fourths, we would get that number and plug it in, right? Well, here it's not just a number, it's an expression. So we have to go that extra step and plug it in. Okay? So we're going to have x to the third plus parentheses, we're replacing y, 3 over 4x squared to the third, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Equals 4 times x times 3 over 4x squared. 